Hello and welcome to our sixth session on this Blender object mode and in this session we are going to discuss about the other primitive objects that we can add in Blender. In polygon modeling every line that you see is actually a straight line. Say for example in Blender I will select this cube press X and I will delete it press shift A and now I am now going to add a spear. Say for example, I add an icosphere. So, although this sphere appears round, if you go inside and if you see it, for example, I will come into edit mode and I will show it here. I will come to wireframe view and I will disable this x-ray view as of now. And here, see, if you take any point here, between the point, the lines that are running will always be straight. So, the thing is although you are seeing it as a curve, you have this segment of lines bended at different angles is going to create this cut. Say for example, if I want a smooth curve, I will come into solid state, I will press X and delete it, I will press shift A and I am going to add a UV sphere. So, even in UV sphere, if I come to wireframe view, you can see all these are straight lines. And now if you need a more smooth curve, I should come into UV sphere and I have to increase this segment from 32 to 64. Rings also I will make it 32. And now if I come into the solid state, this appears more smooth. Means basically in polygons, a line between two points is always a straight line. Now here comes the question to you, how can you create curves? And basically here we have to remember one great French scientist called as Pierre Bizer, who actually discovered the way to write curves in 3D graphics. Whether it is 3D graphics, drawing or in any subject, the way we add a curve is mathematically defined by this great French scientist called Pierre Bizer. And he was working in Renault and at that time when they were designing the car bodies and they wanted to create smooth curves, he actually mathematically came out of a formula or a concept and his concept is even today known as the Bezier curves. Now let us understand exactly how this works. The Bezier curves are actually defined by a set of control points. For example, to draw a line segment, we need two points. And here in this example, P0 and P1. To get to any point in these segments, we use a linear physical function which is equivalent to a linear interpolation with a variable t whose value changes from 0 to 1. This function simply means that the influence of each point depends on t. For t equal to 0, it will be at point 0 and for t equal to 1, we will get p1. And for each value between 0 and 1, we will get a point along the line segment linking this P0 and P1. Here is a visualization of how it works. Great, that was pretty simple. Now what about drawing a curve? In this case, we need three points and we use a quadratic function or a quadratic curve. First, we need to do another linear interpolation between P1 and P2 and then interpolate between L0 and L1. This will give us Q0. If we trace the path of Q0, it will show a curve going from the first point to the last point. The first and the last control point are always the end points of the curve. This function can also be rewritten into this form and this is what we call as a quadratic Bezier. And for a cubic Bezier curve, we need to add an another control point P3 
we do a linear interpolation between P2 and P3 and we call it L2. We do an another interpolation between L1 and L2 and finally we interpolate between Q0 and Q1 and if we trace this, it will look like this. We can rewrite this function into this form and this is what is known as a cubic Beezer curve. So, after all quadratic Beezer curve is just an interpolation between two linear interpolation and the cubic Beezer curve is an interpolation between two quadratic curves. So, this is just a mathematical simple example about the Beezer curve. So, I will come into the blender. So, I will start with a new file, file new general, I will start with a new file. I will press X and delete of this cube. Now, I will press shift A and in the curve, the very first curve you are seeing is called as a Beezer curve. And when I click on this Beezer curve and if I press 7 and come into the top view and if I press period key on the numpad, it is zoomed and you can see a curve here. To control this curve, we have to go into the edit mode. So, I will move into the edit mode now and when I move into the edit mode, you can see here, this is the starting point of the curve and this is the ending point of the curve. And in the starting point, you have a handle and if I click here and if I press G and move it, this is going to move. But if I press R, see this is going to rotate. I will press shift and rotate to rotate it slowly. See, I can rotate it like this and I can adjust the curvature. Or the other way is I can click on one end of the handle here and I can adjust the curve like this. And I can click here and move the curve. And similarly, at the other point also, you have this curve. So, if I rotate this curve, the other curve is also rotating. So, say for example, I want to continue this curve and add some more points. Then select this point and you have to press E on your keyboard. And when I press E, a new point is created. I can bring over here, I can click this handle, press G and move it and set the angle. Now, one more thing here is, if I want this Beezer control not to be uniform, say for example, I want a sharp edge here, I press E and when I move it back, I want a sharp edge here means, I can select this point and press the keyboard shortcut V. And when I press V, you get a menu here, set handler type. You have automatic, vector, align, free and toggle free align. Now, when I choose vector or free, now what happens is now you can see these points have changed. Now, I can individually control each point separately like this. So, in this case, see, if I select this and if I move it, the other is also moving because this is an automatic curve. But here, in this case, I can click it and I can move it like this. I can control each point like this. And this is what we call as a Beezer curve. So, if I press tab and if I enter into this, see, you are seeing a Beezer curve. And how do we use this Beezer curve in Blender? I will select this Beezer curve, press X and I will delete it. Now, again I will press Shift A. I am now going to add a Beezer curve. I will press Tab and come into Edit Mode. Press A and I will press X and delete all the vertices. So, it is an empty Beezer curve now. Now, I will take this pen tool. Now, clicking on this pen tool, I will just show you a drawing. I will click here and then 
I am going to press shift and click here to draw a straight line. Then I will come over here at this point and I am going to move it like this. So I am just drawing a rough shape like this. Then I will click here. So I got a shape like this. Now at this point, I will press V and I will make it free. And then at this point, then I will click at this point here and I am going to add one more vertices. I will click here and add one. I will click here and add one. Now finally after adding this, I will come back to my selection tool. I will click here and press G and move it and adjust this curve a little. So every curve I will hold it and I am just drawing a rough shape like this. So I have created a rough shape here. So here if required, I will just tilt it a little like this. Then I will select this point and I will drag it. So I am creating a rough shape like this. And finally, I will zoom in here. I will select this point and the starting point and I will press F on my keyboard so that they are connected. Now, what I got is some rough shape. Now, how do we use this in Blender is now with this selected, if I come into the modifier here and in add modifier generate, I have one feature here called screw. And when I click on screw and in this, I will change the axis to Y. And now you can see you have a was created. See, we can create these kind of shapes and in the resolution, I am going to set it to 32. So I created a rough was and then I can press tab here. I will come back to edit mode and in wireframe mode, I can move here and I can adjust this curvature to change this structure like this. I can adjust the structure like this and I can move it. I can press A and I can slightly move it like this and I can adjust the structure like this. So I will select this point and I will move it. I will come back to the shaded view. So now what we did, we created a structure like a vase. See, we have created it. Now I will go to file and I am going to click save as and I am going to save this as five underscore visa vase. Okay, I'm going to save this. So I want you to try this and create your own shape like this. I will come back to file new general. I will again select this cube, press X and delete it. Now come to add and in curve, this time I'm going to add a circle. I will come over here somewhere and I will press A and if I add a mesh circle, and if I move it this side, see this is a mesh circle. If I press tab, you can see all these are made up of 32 vertices. So now I will press X and delete it. Now if you come to Beza and if you press tab, you can now see here, this is made up of just four vertices. And by controlling these handles, we have this structure ready. So I will come into file, save as, and now give this file the name as six underscore and I am going to call this as rotate gizmos. So I am now going to create some rotate gizmos. I will select this first one and I am going to call this red gizmo. And then and you have one option here called as the curve data. Click on this curve data and in this curve data, you have geometry. Open this geometry and here you have two futures. One is extrude and another is bevel. So if I click on extrude, now see what happens is, it, this is going to extrude like a cylinder. See, I can extract this like a cylinder and I can convert it into a 3D object. Right now, I will make this zero. 
the other option is bevel and in bevel see if i click on this and if i add this bevel you can see this appears now like a 2 so we use this kind of bezier curves to create pipes basically pipelines pipes wires and all these kind of structures we use bezier curves and here i have created this now and i am going to give this a material i will come into the material slot i will create a new material and i am going to call this as red material and this is a basic material where i will set its color to red and i will come to hexagonal value and i will copy this value then i will open emission and in emission also i will come to hexagonal and paste the same value and then i will set the emission strength to 1 and if you come to shaded view now this is an emitting red circle and only thing is for this to be a gimbal at one end of this circle i need an arrow so to add this i will select it press tab i will press a to select all the vertices right click and i will select subdivide and in overlay enable statistics so now you can see this has 24 vertices then i can come over here in the subdivide menu and it has been done one if i click two see it became 36 vertices i make it three you have 48 vertices so i created more points on this line i select the point over here and i am now going to press g and move it slightly to this point i will bring it closer to this and then here i will come into shaded view press alt s and drag it see this becomes wider so it is getting scaled then i select this vertex point press g and move it in the same angle to a point over here i will bring it close to this like this somewhere here and i will leave it so this has created a structure somewhat like an arrow so i will just move it like this so press shift and move to precisely move it and adjust it so now what happened is you are seeing this circle there is slight mistake in the curvature i will select this and i will slightly adjust it and make it a cut so that it appears as a good curve so i will come back here and i will choose in the shaded area and you have this as the red gizmo i am going to rotate this for x rotation i will press r and i will press y and rotate it by 90 degree so when you rotate an object in this axis it is going to rotate along the x axis i will press shift d and duplicate it right click to place it at the same point and then i will press r and i am going to rotate it along the y axis by 90 degree and this rotation determines the y axis so i am going to call this as green gizmo because it represents y axis i will come into the material and in the material now both red gizmo and green gizmo is applied with the same red material if i click on this two number this will become a new material and i am going to call this as green material and for this green material i will set the base color here to green i will copy this hexagonal value come into emission also and i will set the same value so now i have one green and one red i will select this x press now shift d to duplicate it and right click to place it at the same position and now i am going to rotate it along the z axis or z 90 and i am now going to call this as blue gizmo and in this case 
again I will click on this bezier and I am going to add a blue color here. In hexagonal I will copy this then I will come over here click it and I am going to paste it here. The problem is now the red color also changed. The reason why it changed was see I didn't change the material here. So I will name this as blue material okay and what I did was I will select the red now and for red I have to click on this and I have to make it a separate copy and then I am now going to name this as red material and now again I will set this color to red copy this hexagonal value come into emission and in emission also I will paste it and press enter. So now I have created a gizmo and if you open this see right now red has a rotation of 90 but I want to set all its initial value to 0. This is I have to apply this rotation so for that I will press control plus A and click rotation this became 0. Similarly for this green it is 180 degree along Y. So this also I will select control A and apply rotation and then I will select this blue and I will press control A and apply rotation. So that all has its initial rotation set to 0 and with this setting set I will go to file and save it. We are going to open this file and we are going to work in future classes when we discuss about the Euler function. Euler function means when you are rotating at the bottom you are seeing x, y, z Euler. You have so many Eulers x, z, y, quaternion, y, z, x. What is this? We will have a separate class and at that time we are going to use this. So now you understood how using a curve we can create structures like this. So with this done I will go to file and now save this and this is about the Beezer curve. So now again I will come to file new general I will create a new file I will press X and delete it. Apart from Beezer curves there is another type of curve which we call as NURBS and the difference between NURBS and Beezer is in our previous session when we are talking about we were talking about the control points like P0, P1, P2 and using these control points we are going to control the curves and this is what we call as NURBS. How did this term NURBS and Beezer come into the effect means although Pere Beezer put this as a mathematical formula in 1900 this technique is as old as the Chola rulers that is during the Sangama period when Raja Raja Chola was the king he used to build one of the world class ships and during his time he had developed a technique of building the ship. So when you make a ship basically if the ship should not sink the shape of the ship should be curved and to make it curve using a very hard material he used to use a process wherein using ropes and control points these wooden planks were pulled in different shapes and it was made to sit in the curve point and we call the point where we are exerting the force on it as knots and the point where the pressure is applied we called it as the control point. So using control points and knots even today ships are built and the same technique has been adapted over here. And now in case of Beezer curves we are directly handling the control points but in NURBS we are going to handle the knots or the point where this force is occurred. So to make you understand it better I will come into add curve and now I am going to add a NURB curve and as soon as you add a NURB curve I will press 7 and come into the front view and if I press tab and come to edit mode and now you can see the control of this curve is not done by any point of the curve. 
the curve is controlled by the points outside it. Say for example, I select this point and if I press G and move it, see the curvature is changing. And if I click this and move it, see the curvature is changing. And when I click this and move it, see the curvature is changing. So if I click here, press E and add one more point like this, see it got a curvature like this. So similarly, I will click here and add one more point here, this curvature is added. And here in nerves, you should remember one term that we call is the order of influence. How much influence these points will have on the curve is determined, see if you come into the data window here and if you come into active spline here, you have one value called as order u. See if I set it to 1, I think 1 does not work in this. See the curve on the control path path is the same now. Now if I, uh, it is 2, 2 is the minimum value, if I make it 3, now see how the curve changed and if I click 4, see further it changed. So this is called as the order of influence. So if I press tab, the amount of influence these points have on the curve is determined by this order and using this you can control the curvature and this is what we call as a NURBS curve. NURBS stands for, NURB stands for non-uniform rational B splines. This is the expansion of NURBS and NURBS are basically used by designers to make accurate curves, especially in the car industry. You can see the surface of a car, how it is designed. Every Maruti car bayonet will have the same curvature. Every Maruti Swift has a particular curvature. Every Maruti Baleno has a different curvature. They are all controlled by using this nerves and mathematics. So this is basically used in design, wherein curvature is controlled by using trigonometric functions. Later on, apart from this, so I will select this nerve curve, press X and delete it. So I am going to add a mesh circle here. I will press G, X and move it here. And if I press tab, this is the structure of a mesh circle. Then I will come to add and I am going to add a Beezer curve now. And I will press G, X and move it here. This is the structure of a Beezer curve. But if you take a NURB curve, I when I add a NURB circle, see the in case of a NURB circle, the circle is controlled by this control point. So if I move it like this, see the circle shape is going to change. See I can create some shape like this by using this curve. And again here I can come into the active spline and I can change its influence. So now this is of this shape. If I make it 3, you are getting this shape. If I make it 4, uh, 4 will not be visible in this. Then I will press tab. I will press A, X and delete it. Now again if I press shift A, in curve you also have path. Path means you have one straight line. Press tab, come over here and select this, press G and move it to control the curvature like this. So we can control the curvature like this. I will press X and delete. So in shift A, I have added these surfaces and I have shown it to you. And these surfaces, metaball and text, all this we are going to discuss it in our next session.